imagine a life where you have the time to take things very slowly in the morning. And to be present with yourself in the moment as an important part of your morning routine. Before another day of work begins. Which of course is outside in nature where you spend most of the time learning how to live more of the land and be less reliant on money in a 9 to 5 day job. And instead getting by with the gifts that nature has to offer, like homegrown food from the forest garden, or even a rainwater shower. This has more or less been my life for the last three years living in an off-grid tiny house, working to become a little more self-sufficient every year. In this video I'll talk about how tiny living radically has changed the way I work and how I now make a living for myself outside of the hamster wheel. Not having a full-time job, but something maybe more important, the time on my hands to design my own way of working that resonates more deeply with who I am and what I want in life. My journey into tiny living began about four years ago, when I decided to do something drastic with my life. To quit my otherwise very secure job in the city and instead listen to an inner calling that urged me to change direction in life and do something more meaningful with it. At the time I worked in a pretty generic office building, spending most of my day in front of a screen, doing work that I honestly wasn't very passionate about. So I guess it was only a question of time before I turned my life around. And that time came in 2019 when I decided to start building a tiny house. A very affordable and mobile home that I could easily move out into nature once I found a good spot. It also became my ticket out of the expensive city, where the high cost of living keep many people stuck in the 9 to 5 jobs. So after six months of building, I moved into my new house in the spring of 2020 on a beautiful property that I was allowed to stay on for a while. Fast forward to 2024, where I've now been living for three years on my own little piece of land out here in the forest in a beautiful part of Denmark called Djursland.
Here I've created a very different kind of work life than the one I knew before. One in which my primary concern is, of course, to thrive and live well, but in a way where taking care and being part of the nature around me is essential. And I try to achieve this by doing three very different types of work. So if you've been following my channel for the last couple of years, it may come as no surprise that I've been spending a lot of time out here in my kitchen garden, working to become more self-sufficient. Uh, because when I bought this piece of land, it was actually only just a piece of forest. So I've been working a lot on just clearing everything and also taking down some big trees so I can get enough sunlight into my kitchen garden. Uh, and then also I've been doing infrastructure projects like building a rainwater systems so I can actually uh, water my beds during the summer because uh, because I am off grid so I really need to uh, to collect a lot of rainwater for my garden. I've also been experimenting with different kinds of raised beds like these uh, hügel culture mounds that you see uh, on this side and on in the background where I actually grow uh, most of my vegetables. I made a video about hügel cultures because that's a certain type of uh, raised bed. Uh, and then of course I've been planting a lot of uh, berry bushes and fruit trees uh, that hopefully in the next couple of years will uh, grow big enough to produce me all the fruit uh, and berries that I need uh, to, uh, to live out here. Uh, so that has been like the major part of my work life for the last couple of years, I would say. So the reason why I work to become more self-sufficient is actually not only to produce food, it's also a part of an experiment of mine to uh, try to design a more healthy and sustainable work life. Because when I work more out here in the garden and spending a lot of time in the outdoors in general, I, I become more healthy because I use my body and uh, I'm more active and I get exposed for a lot of sunlight. Uh, maybe not today because it's raining right now, but in general, I, I'm a lot more outside than I was when I was working uh, at the office. So I really enjoy that. I can feel in my body that I am a more healthy person uh, today than I was before. Uh, and then also uh, there is uh, the environmental aspect of producing your own food uh, locally so that you don't have to import food globally because that uh, is very expensive for the environment because you need to uh, use a lot of fuel and gas in order to transport food that is produced uh, in, in far regions of the world, obviously. And then there is the economic argument, because at least in time, my plan is to save a lot of money by producing my own food here in my garden. Uh, and actually, I see a lot of my, like what I do here in the kitchen garden as an investment, really, in, in my own uh, economic future. Because when I buy a lot of fruit trees and berry bushes, uh, they will in time be able to produce so much food that I don't need to buy that much food in the stores. So uh, it's kind of like an investment where some people invest in stocks. Uh, I invest in fruit trees, you could say. So welcome to my cold room. This is where I store a lot of my food that I produce in the garden during the winter. Uh, because a big part of my work life with self-sufficiency is actually to preserve a lot of the food that I grow. So I have food during the winter. Uh, so behind me, I have different jars of dried nettles and dried apples and uh, also uh, some uh, mushrooms that I use in my food, some pickled squash and pickled tomatoes. I also store apples and uh, pumpkins during the winter here, uh, and uh, apple cider and uh, elderflower champagne. So I produce a lot of uh, different varieties of food that can give me vitamins and proteins and carbs and everything that I need during the winter. So a third way that I work with self-sufficiency is actually when I go out in these forests around my property and forage wild edible plants like this uh, ground elder, for instance, that I use in different types of uh, dishes in my kitchen. And it's always a fun experience because you never know exactly what you get back from such a trip. And of course, every season has its own plants that you can eat. 
Uh, and then also many of these plants are old plants that we used to eat in our culture, but in today's uh, modern society we have forgot about them. But uh, they are actually super healthy and you can use them to create new kinds of dishes uh, and introduce new kinds of tastes and nutrients in your diet uh, that you don't get so much in our modern society. So I, I like to, to discover new ways of eating by doing this. And then I'm also uh, taking some of the wild plants and transplanting them into my forest garden so it also has uh, a lot of the local varieties that I can eat uh, growing in between my other plants in the garden. What you see behind me here is my annex and it actually represents a different aspect of my work life which is how I generate an income because obviously I cannot rely solely on the produce from my garden I also need some money to get by like the building class I did last year where we built this tiny house I also do some uh, different courses in self-sufficiency and permaculture uh, on my property. Uh, I did one this spring together with a friend who's also a teacher in permaculture design. So that's uh, some different ways that I generate some income. I also get some passive income from the annex because I rent it out on Airbnb, which is really nice because it's quite popular at the moment, so I get somewhat of a reliable uh, passive income from the annex, especially during the summer. But my primary source of income is actually from doing presentations all around the country about living off-grid in a tiny house. And I think I've been doing that for about three years now. Uh, and alongside of that, I also teach as a freelance uh, teacher on folk high schools in tiny house building classes, which is a super meaningful aspect now of my new work life because I get to help other people achieve their dreams of tiny living. Uh, it's certainly much more rewarding, I would say, than to be sitting in front of a desk all day long as I was before. The last type of work that I do is volunteer work in this shop behind me in a small town not far from a tiny house. Here we sell local and sustainable products and also function as a post house. After all, it can be a bit lonely sometimes working in the forest, so by coming here I feel part of a community now that I don't have a workplace with colleagues. So there you have it, how tiny living drastically has changed my work life. 
from having one job before to in a way now having three jobs because I have the work that I do with self-sufficiency, I have all the different kinds of paid work that I do and also the volunteer work of course. Uh, but the thing is that I can just adjust how much time I want to spend on each of these activities. So I don't feel like I'm in the risk of burning out uh, by doing all these different kinds of work. Um, and also they actually provide me with different kinds of value that are super important for me. Like uh, exercise and money and food and uh, community also. So my experiment is just to find the right balance between all these type of work. So, uh, so I actually can design my own super sustainable work life in a way. But I don't want to paint an entirely rosy picture of my lifestyle because it has also been a bit difficult at times. Uh, not at least because uh, the sheer amount of work that you need to put into building a house and also a garden and then be figuring out ways of getting an income. So if I were to do it again, I think I would recommend having some kind of a part-time job just to uh, give you that uh, headspace to be enjoying life a little bit more because you don't have to worry about getting an income. And then I've also learned that it can be a bit difficult for people around you at times to, uh, to really understand what it is that you're going through. Uh, so I would also recommend that you maybe find someone who is going through the same process as you because it can be a... Uh, a bit easier to uh, to share your worries and your experiences with people who know what it is that you're going through. But, uh, but in the end, I would say that I have definitely uh, got myself a better uh, life now, a better work life, because uh, I'm so privileged to be living in a country and in a time uh, where I have the opportunity to do this. So I'm, uh, I know how privileged I am, so I won't complain. Uh, especially today, uh, it's a Wednesday morning and everyone is going to work, but uh, me and Bussy can be enjoying life here in the hills and now we will uh, go for a long walk. But uh, thank you for watching and see you again next time.